Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, sloths of all sizes around the world. Today is the Mythic Championship. Yes, the culmination of everything that Division 1 have been working towards here in Heroes Lounge Season 13. I am joined today by the lovely Deadly Kitten. How are you Hello, doing? Hello, Transparent. It's been a, a long time we we talked, right? Since yes, uh, yeah, a whole the evening. Oh, just a uh, uh, thirteen hours or so ago. <laughs> so we were, yep. well, I think fourteen hours since we were last on stream. But yeah, we've we've had a fantastic time yesterday in the legendary cup. Be sure to check that out on our YouTube channel when it next appears. But that's not what we've got for you today. The Mythic Championship, GK. We have uh, yeah these fantastic Div Division One teams. Who have we got in our first game that we are casting together here today? Yeah, in the first Division One match. We have disgusting taking on Diablo Needs Affection. Two very strong teams uh, have been um, have been in Div 1 for a long time as well. So this is going to be a great match here. Yeah, it should be indeed. We got some, obviously, uh, there is some notable players in DNA as well as Disgusting. The whole of the Mythic Championship is just full of these people that you will start to recognize. I think in the Legendary Cup, people are like, oh, I'm not sure who quite some of these players are, even though the games were fantastic. Yeah, uh, but today there'll be people that you recognize from the top of Storm League and from perhaps other tournaments in the past as well. So today, Disgusting versus DNA. We've, we've gone through our little map draft as well. Um, can we just talk through that right now? Yeah, let's go for it. Um, so it started off uh, from Diablo Needs Affection, who banned Infernal Shrines and Tomb of the Spider Queen. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other side, Disgusting banned out Sky Temple and uh, our final map from the Legendary Cup yesterday, Brax's Holdout. Yeah, I don't want to see any of that today <laughs> too much. Although it may happen once again in the Grand Finals, but we've got a long way until that. Hopefully not 11 hours, but <laughs> a long way to go. Uh, so yes, Dragonshire has been a pickup here, but Diablo needs affection. What are you sort of expecting that uh, we might well see coming out from the teams today? I mean, these are such high-level teams, right? I expect great macro, great great team fighting, good rotations. It's just going to be so good to watch these games and watch these high-level players face off against each other. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a long old season for these teams, but <laughs> they are familiar with the format. I think uh, DNA Galaxy. I think they took the previous season off as a break. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, Diablo needs a. Affection. Yeah, I think they took a, one of the season, previous seasons off as a break. So they're coming back strong here, coming into the the Mythic Championships playoff finals, and they'll be trying to break through. Obviously, we've had we have a winners bracket and a lowers uh, lower bracket here today. Um, that means that later on we'll be having Skull Spore 2.0 going against Kazu Winters every day, and they just have to to win that one, and then they'll be in the grand final. Or if they lose that, they drop into the lower bracket where they'll be facing. The, the teams that battle through, as as we say, sort of disgusting versus DNA here. They'll be trying to get through to the, the lower bracket semi-final uh, against either the winner of Hyper Pepper Milady, and then those two teams will be facing off to try and fight the winner of Team Hasu and Team Skog Support. So yeah, plenty of games to watch today, and we'll be going on yeah for the next six or so hours, um, <laughs> possibly longer if we have some two rows. <laughs> two ones or maybe even some 35 minute tomb games honestly go back and watch the legendary cup if you've got 11 hours to spare and hopefully we'll have some highlights or something like that because it was so so good i mean I, i'm almost lost for words this this mythic championship is really going to be so exciting the, the, the meta right now just seems to allow so many different heroes i think we sort of had gazza being picked up with the lunara yesterday varian being played as a main tank and i'm sure we may well see a butcher come out today if some particular players are going to be playing so um yeah here on dragonshire you're talking about the rotations and Gul'dan was a big favorite yesterday but today i think in the mythic championships it might not be quite the case uh we might be seeing more prioritization on some of the more hyper carry heroes that people talk about do you think dk yeah i think like i'm really surprised that cassia wasn't uh wasn't picked up that much yesterday in the legendary cup actually mm -hmm. um we've seen it a few like once or twice from uh, food for phrobius but besides that 
not not that much and it kind of surprised me actually yeah i mean she is incredibly powerful but i think some teams just feel a little bit vulnerable sometimes when they get stunned out a bit but in this high tier that the mythic champion is this lot of grandmasters here high level masters and some some players are even sort of in in those ccl teams so i think everyone's keeping an eye on at the moment so uh, watch out for that but yeah, in terms of Heroes Lounge content as well, this is not just the only thing we've got on going on at the moment. We have an ARAM tournament that's uh, going on currently as we speak. Not obviously right now, but uh, yeah, next next week will be the playoff finals for them um, here on this channel as well on twitch.tv forward slash Heroes underscore Lounge. And if that's not what you want and you want something that's a bit more innovative, a bit more exciting than just your regular Heroes of the Storm action, we have the Nexus Rumble, which will be returning next week at 19.30 DET, where hopefully we'll have a little bit of a surprise for you, a little bit of a fun game as well. Uh, we've got some good action in the chat as well. So if you are feeling like you're cheering on one of the teams, maybe another one of the teams that aren't on uh, stream right now. Make sure you put that in the chat. Uh, DK, who do you think is going to make it all the way to the end? Put your predictions where you are Ooh. right now, because that is what it's all about. We're, we're fresh from our, our sleep. Some of us have only just woken up. Some of us have been awake for a while. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, DK, who do you think is going to make it to the end? Uh, I mean, Hasu wins these every day. It's just such a strong team having I think three or even four CCL players. Uh, yeah. And they and have uh, quite a few Mythic Championships under their belt already. Yes, that's <laughs> so. true. Uh, both players, uh, Chelvin and X-Ray, are uh, three times in a row Mythic Champions. And they're looking to defend their title right here today. Yeah, it's it really is about that sort of defending what they had before. But it seems like Skog Support want to give them for their money. And obviously we have many of the players today. Oh, sorry, I'm just... Just got to do something myself. Dedicated. Just, just uh, yeah. We'll just cover, cover over um, what we would hear once again. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, as I said, um, the, in the in the upper brackets, uh, Hasu Winsies every day are going to be uh, taking on. Uh, let me see, who are they taking on again? Where's the bracket? Skok support, that's the one. Um, and Skok support also um, have a lot of uh, CCL players who is um, the likes of Gia, uh, Skog, Berghold, Make, Galnagunar. So it's going to be such a good series there, which we will be um, taking on this channel as well uh, a bit later on in the day so definitely stay uh, stay around for that it's going to be a great match um yeah i'm i'm really really hyped to see that um but then the lower bracket we have disgusting against dna right here and at the same time hype is taking on pepe melady on heroes uh, heroes underscore lounge 2 where there are also two great casters there luca and yosh taking that series on um, so check over there as well. I'm not sure how it, or if they have started their match yet. Um, that's going to be a really good one as well. Yeah, we're just making sure that all of the teams are ready and got all their players in a nice, nice, neat order. But uh, we just, yeah, we'll just have to wait for that here on Heroes Land uh, Channel One. Um, yeah, the Mythic Championship. I was going to say something earlier. I've completely forgotten what it was. Um, but uh, yeah, Division 1 has been going on for 16 weeks. We, we finally got to this end point. So many of the teams have already played against each other in the main season and they know what to expect. They know what to expect from group stages as well. We we just got to wait to see exactly how these teams will play. If there's one hero you'd like to see DK, what would that be? One hero played today at a, at a top level. Something maybe a bit Ooh. surprising, or, or even not surprising. Just something you want to see being played at this level. I mean, I'm, <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to be played, but I'm a really big fan of Stitches. <laughs> big fan stitches. of the Stitches. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could well, could well be pulled out. We've, we've now, we have seen it in the past in some high level games. Obviously, back in the day of HGC, Dignitas loved to pull it out Ooh, with JPL. JPL. Um, 
of which you know talk uh, just being a bit off topic i did see the bakery was uh playing in storm league recently was he um, oh yeah on twitter uh of course if you are a big twitter head you can uh, follow us on twitter with uh on heroes lounge uh gg i believe is our our twitter tag uh we've got we try to post some of the clips of the exciting matches that happened but also you get to keep up with the current events um of course <laughs> if you like to play amateur heroes of the storm or just want to get involved uh we have our current signups for EU Season 14 are now going on. If you do exclamation mark sign up in the chat, you get a nice little link to guide you through how the sign up process works. Even if you're just by yourself, you don't have your own team, or maybe you've just got a few friends that you all want to play together. Yep, you can sign up to Season 14. We'll place you with a couple of like-minded individuals, and uh, you can have a grand old time enjoying yourself. Maybe you're a high-level player and you think you can beat some of the players we have today. It's... Uh, all about getting involved, signing up, or even if you want to replace myself and Deadly Kitten here on the caster's bench, we'll be happy to have you get involved as a caster as well. We, we're always excited to see so many friendly faces putting a lot of effort here in, in Heroes of the Storm. Whew. Yeah, definitely. Always looking for more people to join us. Um, we do this in our free time and we really enjoy it, so we want to put out, put out as much content as we can. If we have more people to do that, then we'll have even more content for everyone to enjoy. Yeah, it, it's always good. Um, we have, obviously, as I already said, the ARAM tournament going on right now. So if ARAM's more your thing, we do that between seasons. So uh, always watch out for that. I know a few of you aren't big fans of playing sort of conventional Heroes of the Storm and much more like those random picks. Uh, myself and Deadly Kitten here are in a team together, but we have yet to play a match. We're Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> We're trying to get ourselves uh, organized and find out when the other teams are available. But um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that. ARAM is just so much fun. Um, unfortunately, uh, just talking of other unfortunate things, Hogger, the big the big man himself, the, the, the what, what, what do I call it? What is it called? The, the threat? No. The... Uh, the pest of Elduin? Oh, I can't remember what it is. It's called I him. have wow. no clue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put it in the chat. Um, the terror of Elduin. That's it, isn't it? Um, that's not even the right words, but I'm putting them all out there. Yeah, unfortunately, he can't be played today in the Mythic Championship. A little bit unfortunate, a little bit sad, but he has got a few bugs still available with him. I was just in the Storm League, actually, just beforehand, and we're trying out a few combos, just seeing what was going on, and he actually does an incredible amount of damage just by himself and just dedicated i'm i'm going to reveal this to you now a bit of a secret i think light bomb and the holder pole oh no heroic their cooldowns are very similar they the hog can pretty much one one solo kill someone after it as well with the amount of damage he can put out it is incredible dedicated you should watch out for that next season yeah, definitely. Hopefully, you'll be unbanned uh, very soon uh, by uh, by our lovely EU League manager who holds everything down right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we try to keep everything ship shape and keep an eye on on things like certain little bugs uh, that may be creeping through, especially with this hogger patch. Um, yeah, we, we we're still waiting on one last member of Diablo needs affection. Hopefully. They're, they're just finding that Diablo player who needs that little bit of affection. They're, they're so trying to get ready and get organized. But uh, yeah, thank you for bearing with us today. If you've got any big questions that you'd like to see, maybe for us to answer, I'm happy to try and answer them right now. <laughs> if it's just about Heroes Lounge or, or even about what heroes we can expect from these teams. Yeah, it looks like they're um, waiting on one more player um, who isn't responding, unfortunately. So they might be looking for a sub uh, right now, which is going to be quite um, quite unfortunate for them, actually, because, you know, when you're at such a high level, team yeah. coordination is everything, right? And if you have to bring out someone who isn't part of the team, you don't practice with, you don't scrim with, it could, uh, it could cost them uh, with the synergy. Yeah, absolutely. I always think there's two of the hardest things in Heroes Lounge. That's um, scheduling and losing. And the, the first <laughs> one is equally important right now. Scheduling your team to make sure they're all awake, all ready for a Sunday afternoon's playing of Heroes of the Storm. To be 
active and enjoying the mythic championship it's very important so um, make sure your teams have got those alarms set <laughs> because otherwise you're going to be missing out i know i've i've had players asleep before it's very hard to to get them all ready but it just means that we can have a fantastic whole day enjoying this hero's lounge action like we did yesterday in the legendary cup Yep, so Dragonshire. Dragonshire. Once again, uh, let's just recover over the map bands because it's been a while since we did that. And I just want to sort of see what we've. Uh, <laughs> what we can yeah, do. Indeed. So. Uh, sorry, go, take it away, Trent. No, no. So obviously we had um, Infernal Shrines and Tomb of the Spider Queen banned out by yeah. DNA. What, what do you think this means in terms of sort of their preparation for today? Um, I mean. Two of Spider Queen and Infernal Shrines is really um, maps where you have to fight over a point, right? On Infernal Shrines, you have the Punisher, uh, which spawns after you kill 40 minions. And then on Tomb of the Spider Queen, you have to protect these pay ins for the gems where you can get the objective. Um, so maybe they don't want to fight over that point control. But then on the other side, they do pick Dragonshire, which is slightly similar. Yeah. That's where you have to hold the top and the bottom shrine. Um, to be able to capture that Dragon Knight. Yeah, and it's, you know, that it really does show that they maybe perhaps want one of those more trickier maps of... Because I, I would say that Infernal Shrines and Tomb of Spider Queen are quite simple in the way that the shot calling is done, quite, uh, you know, you, you kind of often know where you need to be most of the time. Whereas Dragonshire, there's so much stuff happening all over the map that, I mean, it's incredible to cast, incredible to watch, but as a player, it can get a little bit confusing of, oh, we've got to be over here, we've got to time our camps, but the enemy team pushing in these camps has action happening all over the map. And I think it really sort of shows at this high level that if you can win on Dragonshire, you really are in control of the game. On the other side, disgusting, they ban out Braxis, Holdout, and Sky Temple. Now, they're often known as cheese maps. Do you think there's anything more to those bans there, DK? I think uh, Braxis Holdout and Sky Temple are two maps that um, most of your community enjoys so less than the other maps. Um, and I think it's just, just their comfort. Like, oh, we don't like this maps, these maps, so we just don't play them. We don't want to. We don't want to play on them. Yeah, and perhaps uh, to 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 if you were to pre replace these two maps with with one map from the hero the the map pool that isn't in there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a hypothetical with you here, DK. Oh you no. Have Warhead Junction or Garden of Terror, and I'm I'm gonna give you Haunted Minds as an option as well. <laughs> Which one of those would you prefer to see than Sky Temple or Braxis Holdout? Is uh, the All of the Above an option? or All of the Above. What's is your favorite map of those three? <laughs> <laughs> Garden of Terror, Haunted Mines, and um, uh, Warhead Junction. I mean, there's been a rework to Warhead Junction uh, in the most yeah. recent patch, where there's a tunnel uh, from bottom to t uh, top lane. Um, which improves the rotations, and I don't know, maybe that could be the, the savior of the map. I'm not sure. It's really interesting. You can do a top bot rotation with the with double the portal, soak. Yeah. <laughs> which makes it very unusual. I did ask people in the chat if they had any questions. We have had a couple uh, come in. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had transparent loot hoard build or no on Hawker. I have no clue. I didn't play Hawker myself. DK, have you played Hawker? I have not. And not even on PTR. And the other um, the other questions is what heroes do you think will be picked in the matches? We had a little bit of what heroes we want to see, but heroes do we think are going to be picked? It's hard to say. I would like to see Diablo. He needs Di affection. He needs affection, indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, Dragon Shire itself, I, 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 I am thinking very much it's going to be Greymane. It's going to be a, a high priority here. I just think he does really well with getting the camps picked up. You have the Cursed Bullet if you want to go for a blow-up sort of composition on the enemy tank, which can mm -hmm. be incredibly good for getting that point control as we talk about. Um, DK, any 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 heroes you think might pop up? Uh, I mean, Tychus has been coming into the meta really strongly recently, and he is such a strong pick at the moment to delete those frontline tanks um as a tank myself i hate playing against tychus um yeah so yeah he's uh, 
definitely very strong and could definitely be picked up. It's also, uh, Tychus is also seen in CCL quite a lot. Uh, and Nick plays it. Um, but at such a high level, it's it's insane to th even think about. And besides that, Rexar is always a very strong pick uh, on this map where you can get the lane and you can hold the point with the Misha. And then there's always the Ana, the Ming, the Chromie, you know, the blow up combos. Yeah. It's You're always, absolutely right. You know, it, it depends what kind of playstyle you have, right? For sure. And I think, especially if you do go for the blow up here, you often lose a little bit of a macro presence. But getting that one kill can sometimes be the key to getting the Dragon Shrine here on uh, Dragon Shrine. <laughs> Dragon Shrine. <laughs> Dragon Shrine. Um, yeah, that can often be the key. And I think it means that you can sort of put out that successful. Uh, kill and then really take control of the map and try and get that snowball running. We we talk about Dragon Shire being a map that's hard to snowball, but I think if, if you can really get your teeth stuck in, maybe get a, a couple of camps down the bottom, you can just siege up and and, and get run away with the game almost. Uh, it can be incredibly hard to come back. That's the other thing. So uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely can be. It's you know Dragon Shire is definitely one of the hardest map to be able to control. Um, because the rotations are so are so hard and they're so different than other maps, right? Because in some maps you see a uh, one in the top lane and four men rotates bottom and then mid and then bottom again, right? But that's not something you usually see here on Dragon Shire. Sometimes you see a one three one setup. Some sometimes you see a one 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 setup with two people um, doing the camps everywhere. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. just very very confusing <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really can be so confusing. And with the, with this map we are just sort of counting down the clock right now. Uh they're really trying to find someone else um to to join in with their team. I'm really not sure what they want. Um it's uh yeah we 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 we're just looking to try and get a substitute ready for them. Of course they are restricted with their substitutes. No one else playing in the the mythic championship playoffs can play in this team. So uh, it's a case of trying to find a player who really wants to play. Um, yeah, does anyone in chat want to play for uh, Diablo needs a faction? <laughs> It looks yeah, we're, <laughs> we're getting a sub. <laughs> we're getting a magic sub. We want to get some content on um, on on stream, and it looks like we may well get the last one. It's it's good. We're we're gonna have Ooh. a substitute from Food for Frobius. Um, oh, it it <laughs> come pulling it out. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're finally going to be able to have. Uh... Oh. It looks like they have a. <laughs> we're we're they having have time. <laughs> so they had a sub, uh, which was uh, given by um, by one of the moderators actually. Uh, but then apparently one of the players from Diablo needs affection um, found a sub. So here we go. Are we are we gonna <laughs> we going to have a substitute? Uh... Finally, we'll. Mazaru is possibly Mazuru. stepping up. We'll just have our moderator check that substitute um, and see what to goes be, down. To be ready to go into the draft transparent soon. Yeah, obviously we have had a, quite a delay. Um, so hopefully we'll get going. But this means that we'll just have a nice smooth day because it often depends with the the mythic championship we have a lot a few games to run and the schedule does mean that it can be a little bit awkward um and he's here he's in the lobby transparent it, it does seem uh it does seem that they're ready <laughs> okay and it looks like mizuru is an uh, is an offlane main and um, usually known for his chen picks so that's going to be really interesting on Dragonshire. 
Yeah, we're just having a little bit of check here with them, but we are going to have a game for you very sorely. Yep, Dragonshire. Off lane is so important on Dragonshire, and getting that is essential. So here we go. We're going into the draft now. Dragonshire, game number one of the Mythic Championship playoff final. Here we go. Daddy Kiran, we're finally here. It seems like it's been finally a long here. time. It's been uh, 25 minutes-ish, but uh, we're finally here in Dragonshire in game number one of the Mythic Championship. What do you expect here from the band's transparent? I am expecting some bits and pieces to go down. Oh, it... Uh, um, yeah. We are just okay? having a double check. Okay. <laughs> double check with what's going on. Aerial band out actually here. Um, against uh, DNA Mac the Kid. Um, who is a very, very strong tier we have played against him in Storm League. Very obnoxious to deal with. Now, and as I said before, Chromie, such a power pick. Uh, now that Medallion has been removed, uh, Temporal Loop has been back in the meta. And it's just so strong to get those pickoffs. If you don't have a cleanse like a Rhaegar or something like that. Now Tracer gets banned out against Marlow, which makes a lot of sense. He was uh, very well known for his tracer. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is important. We might just have a little bit of a draft reset coming in. Uh, apologies for that. We're just having a little bit of check, obviously, with substitutes. Substitutes have to be used. We have certain rules, and unfortunately, we can't give them. That is unfortunate. But we will see the the this draft uh, being continued uh, as um, when the when the real draft is going to take place when the game is going to take place. Yeah, the, and there it is. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry about that. We do, yeah, uh, sort of, we have to be a little bit of a stickler for the rules sometimes. Uh, and it's one of those cases, unfortunately, even with substitutes, trying to find who we have. Um, we'll be having Hat come in, who is another off lane. Um, so that is all fine. And we can yeah. also play DPS. So yeah, we're just getting things remade and all fine. Yeah, he's going to be here in a few moments. Um... And then we'll get back into the draft. So we did see the Tyrael and the Chromie ban. Um, and then Garrosh was also banned out uh, on the side of Diablo Needs Affection. Which is, on this map, it's really, really... I really like Garrosh myself as a tank player because at level 1 you can pick the throw range. Um, which is so good to, to throw people over the walls into your forts. It's just something that's always very, very fun to do. <laughs> Yeah, it is indeed. Sorry, um, uh, we're, we're just struggling a few things at the moment. Thank you for bearing with us today. We'll be getting right on with the Mythic Championship very soon. Of course, if you are joining us, this is Heroes Lounge Mythic Championship. The very end of our season here for Season 13. Um, yeah, we have had a fantastic Season 13 in general, and these top teams have been playing so, so well. We had a little bit of a smaller Division 1 this season, which meant that it was a little bit more competitive. And this uh, this this series should be incredibly good. Of course, we do have some games going on on Heroes Lounge 2 at the moment, but do bear with us as our draft will be going on very, very shortly. We are, uh, yeah, uh, right now we have DNA, uh, yeah, DNA versus Disgusting. Obviously, both teams really eager to play. And uh, both teams have <laughs> been up late, so wanting to play as well. So here we go. Hopefully going into the draft very soon. Uh... Yeah, and Hat is here now in the, in the game. And it looks like we're ready to go into the game. Into the draft, sorry. Yeah, we will do. We're finally there after a long time. Thank you for staying with us. Once again, this is the Mythic Championship. And there it is, Dragonshire. Draft number one, we can finally finish this draft and head into our first game here in the Mythic Championship. 
I expect we'll see the similar bans, just out of respect. And also, I don't think they banned anything, particularly in the off lane. Apart from maybe Tyrael could have been considered in the off lane back in the day, but uh, no, I here don't. we are. Same bans. <laughs> Seems appropriate. I would have, I would have sort of said that they could do different bans if they really wanted, but I don't think the teams do. Um, no. Hat is going to be playing here for the Mythic Championship level after almost being the Legendary Cup winner. It seems almost fitting that he's here today to once again prove himself. Uh, how do you think they're going to be turning out here, at DK? Yeah, I mean, um, I know uh, Hats pretty well myself, and he is such a good player. He has so much knowledge of the game. Uh, as we see, Sylvanas banned out instead of Garrosh here. Um, the Bryling is first pick now, and. Dragonshire, this is such a strong pick because you can just stay in the bottom lane and whenever your solo laner, solo laner needs help uh, top lane, you can just global up there, give him some health, help, uh, help him take the points and just gives him uh, a huge advantage. And there it is, the Tychus that I talked about, Transparent. Yeah, and that is a power pick. pick. Yeah, such a power pick at the moment. Tychus is really, really good. I mean, I love the way he just shreds through tanks, and that's always what he's been known for, but he just does it so well at the moment. He's fairly safe. He's got a good little bit of self-sustain as well. It just really empowers your draft and allows you to get those blow-up picks. But there we go, DK, the Cassia you were talking about. The Cassia I wanted to see, yes. I love this pick. And D.Va as well in that rotation. And D.Va is always such a strong pick on the, on the top lane, right? Because she has those two health bars she can use um, to trade in her favor. Now we see yeah. Garage being banned out. Yeah, Garage being banned out, which I think is, you know, it's one of those things. Tychus does percent damage, but also if you go the bigger they are, then he's not going to deal the percent damage when it's important. The Diablo being banned out against um, Diablo needs affection it seems almost fitting, which I think is good. Um, Tychus does really well with Diablo as well as against, so I think banning out here is obviously important because you're not going to pick it into it, Tychus. Oh, the stitches! Your I wanted it. Answered. M Mac the kid was uh, stream sniping and he gave me what he wanted. Yes, I like this. Yeah, we have. Stitches now, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, I was just gonna say that Garrosh is banned out probably because although it seems good against Tychus, he can't do the percentage damage when it matters, and also he's at that short range that Garrosh really likes to throw people at. So good bans here from both teams. But what do you think Disgusting will answer with right now in these last two uh, picks? Give me one second. <laughs> it's going to be Li Ming and Mei, in my opinion, but I'm not sure. Uh, that's a good <laughs> prediction once again. Just like your thrall yesterday, yep, we have yep. Ming and May. Uh, yeah, May banned out a lot yesterday in the Legendary Cup. But uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, it's it's looking good. Like the May is such an unusual pickup, but it's going to be exciting yeah, to see, especially is. against the Stitchers. What do you think the matchup is like there? Um, I'm not sure, actually. It's been such a long time since I've seen May and Stitchers in the same game. Um... But I think whenever Stitches goes for a hook, uh, the May is going to be there to either tank it or engage onto the Stitches so they can't uh, actually get the kill there. And so I'll be I'll be looking forward to this match. Yeah, I mean, the Imperius as part of the format is really interesting. They do lack a little bit of that essential wave clear, but they've got that in Stitches and Tychus a fair bit. I do like how much of the blow up. We were talking about this blow up earlier and it just looks phenomenal. Uh, I believe uh, if we look at the stats, or, well, not the stats, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to find something here. If you do think that one of these teams are going to win, just shout it out in chat. We want to see all of that. We've got a bit of betting at the moment. There should be a couple of minutes left right now. And so if you think that Disgusting are going to win, make sure you do exclamation mark bet A and then the number of points. But if you think that Stitches blow up composition from Diablo needs affection are going to win, then exclamation mark bet B and the number of points. I might have lost all my points yesterday, but I'm going to be putting my money where my mouth is and back for a bet B here of, uh, well, all, because I think I've got about 40 points. I've got 60. Winner, winner. I have 50 points and I'm going to bet everything on that stitches. I I, I have to. It's an obligation, uh, Transparency. <laughs> it is an obligation, and I, I want to support Hat, who did so well yesterday in the Legendary Cup. It would just be a delight to see him win win the Mythic Cup instead today. <laughs> that would be something. He's thinking, like, I, don't, I don't need the Legendary Cup, I'll just get the Mythic one. 
No, indeed, indeed. But here we go. The Mythic Championship, game number one on Dragonshire. Yes, we have it indeed. It is on the blue team. We have Disgusting with Lavacol on May, Arkunis on Diva, Itrax on Cassia, Rutek on Brightwing, and Aran70 on Li Ming. And on the right side, Diablo needs a faction. We have Mac the Kid playing Stitches, Marlow on that Imperius Tenderloin, on Malfur and Abelar playing that Tychus and Hat is going to be on Rexar. Yeah, these two teams now facing off. I want to see this blow up composition. I want to see a hook come out, an Imperial Spear, a Root, and Tigers just melt them down. And the CC, here's the hook, there's the Root, there's a stun, there's another stun, and there it is. They're killed straight away. I and called it and they got it. And that's a What a blow up. Stuff. Imperius didn't even hit the stun on that target. Um, he hit the May, which uh, interrupted her cooldowns to be able to peel for the Cassia. What a beautiful unstoppable there by Revacal on that May, dodging the hook. Yeah, I mean, using using the ice block is going to be essential. Obviously, there's a bit of a cooldown, though. You've got 40 seconds away, but there is the spear coming in. The bright wing already teleporting in, knowing to keep Lavacool up. Nicely done. The hook coming the out hook once again on there. The CC chain is impossible to play against. DK, they're, they're struggling already. Yeah, I mean, they got that early kill, and that's really going to set the tone for this series. Uh, between Disgusting and Diablo Needs Affection because their Diablo Needs Affection is going to be really aggressive here, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Trying to get those picks with the Stitches, with the Malfur and the blow up from the Tychus. So we see um, an early prioritization on the Bruiser camp in the top lane. Yeah, and look at the rotations. I love this about the Mythic Championship, is that you see these rotations coming out. You see these little peaks top. They don't even actually show top, but they... They make their way there just in case they want to do something, and it's super nice to see. We see an invade coming in here from Disgusting. They're going to try and take this camp, but Stitches is there. Can Stitches have enough fear factor to put them off? The Tenderloin gets the root no, out. There's the hook, the hook across. Lavacol is trying to get out. He does slide away, and Brightwing is there to heal him up. But Marla gets the spear onto Brightwing. Can the DNA Blanc be able to get them down? Yes, Rutek goes down. That's another kill, costing them for the siege camp. Yeah, and beautiful stun there by Marlo, uh, securing that kill on the Brightwing. Uh, as he misses now on the Rather Kill. But that was so good. They they had to use the Brywing TP onto the May. Um, and Marlo did know that timing on the Brywing, held his stun for it, and rewar it rewarded them with a kill. Yeah, it's one of those dangerous things. If you're oh, Cassia is in a that. lot of trouble there. As Hat and Marlo pick her off. Hat's in a bit of trouble. 90 HP is trying to not get killed here. The body block's coming out from Stitches, but no, the heal's not enough to keep him alive. As Hat does indeed go down, the Leeming gets a little bit of a reset, but it's not enough to net them another kill. Yeah, so they do trade one for one. <coughs> this but is... in the meantime, Tychus was just soaking the bottom lane, getting yeah, the, the call... additional experience. The call out in the chat that this is immediate action. Yeah, it's been... How exciting already in the Mythic Championship. I can't quite believe it, TK. It kind of looks like the Aram tournament we're going to have <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. These teams are just rotating around. We see the, the, the percentage damage onto the May. It's beautiful stuff. I really like what Abla is doing here. I want to talk a little bit about the fear factor that you have with Stitches. Like, he's, he's sort of got this big graph. Obviously, while he has the hook, the fear factor is high. Oh, and there, there it is. is the hook into hook. the root. And Stitches is just going to go for the body blocks now but Browing is forced to tp down mac the kid incredible stuff here putting all that i think uh i think you know being <laughs> pulling out these hooks you just don't miss when you are mac the kid no and uh transfer and you and i played stitches recently as well together didn't we that we was did. also uh <laughs> also quite the fun i had i haven't played him in a long time but He's just yeah. so fun when you hit those hooks, it feels so rewarding. Yeah, we've got a bit of a 2-3 split at the moment. Mac the Kid trying to get all those globes. He did indeed go for that globe talent, so once he has uh, not three more, he will get 5% movement speed. Every time he gets 15, and got another 5. So looking to get those fast rotations. But the, this 3-2 split is benefiting the blue team a little bit at the moment, as Hat is struggling to clear out the camps. And Marlo is also doing the soak in the mid lane every so often. But here we see in the bot lane, Dabla is... Uh, Abla is going in, <laughs> trying to get the damage out, while Cassia is now being forced out in the mid lane. There's just action everywhere. We're talking about this, that this happens on this map, and it's going to be chaotic for our observer, Samu. Yeah, I feel very bad for him, but now there's uh, Abla and Tenderloin are setting up to invade the siege camp that is being started by the left team. Um, are they going to be aggressive? 
they are they are setting up for it, but the polymorph denies the uh, the engage the dash from Abgar, and they pick up the siege camp. Yeah, we see here at the top, Hack is trying to duel against Diva, trying to get that control point, and yes, does indeed get it. Red team are in control. They're going to use this time to get the siege camp. As blue team have to hover around the mid lane, try and get somewhere just in case the red team suddenly appear. But no, the siege camp being picked up. Marlow a little bit in danger as uh, Arkunis now takes over the top shrine, relaxing the blue team's pressure as they rotate down. Oh, Tenorin gets engaged on by Ravakel. The combo hits so much damage, and he falls. What a beautiful combo there by Arion Seventy. On that Li Ming. You have to be so careful rotating like that, especially as a squishy little Malfurion. But here comes a big spear from Marlo, and that is going to be the danger coming out here. But no, the Polymorph is going to put him in a bit of play, uh, space. Lavacol trying to get the slow, but no, not enough. The hook yet. is but there the on Cassia. What a turnaround from Mac the Kid. Beautiful sure if, stuff there. I'm not sure if the teleport was on the wrong target there accidentally, or if they were listening just going for the shield and the energy. But yeah, nice pickup here from Mac the Kid. But he's now in a world of hurt as well, as Arian's going to put out the damage, and it is going to fall as well. He's getting body blocked by that May. This is more action than anyone's seen in the last nine months, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, beautiful stuff going going around here. Now Marlo is here, looks for the stun. Um, and the trait is being used by Levacal to dodge it. Yeah, so I was so we were saying that Tenderloin's rotation was a little bit aggressive. Of course, with the stitches, there's not quite enough peel, but Marlo is there to provide a little bit of extra CC stun. But. Right now, they're just trying to peel out. Lavacal is going in on this May. The, oh, the Cassia just misses. But look, the Avalanche puts Marlo in a world of hurt. But oh, no, they're engaged. Look back. Arkan goes slow, but Marlo is going to be the first one to die. Wow. Now, uh, this is very surprising. We don't see uh, <coughs> we don't see Flash of Anger from Imperius. Yeah, instead uh, going for the Blaze of Glory, which is going to leave that Scorch line. Perhaps enabling a little bit more damage than their combo setting up the combos a little bit more. I'm not quite sure what the reasoning is there, but it's doing them okay and getting these kills. But in terms of control points, that's also going over the red team right now. Yeah, and Hat is maybe looking for a rotation down, but he decides against it. Just going to cure that uh, that mid lane against Arcunis on that Diva, and maybe can even pressure to take that Dragon Knight. Yeah, so right now, red team really posturing away. They're having these hooks, they're having these spears coming out, really trying to get the world of her. What I think might have been the choice here is obviously uh, Marlo on the Imperius has gone for the percentage damage on level one as well, just to get that additional blow up on the May. Because May does have a lot of HP, the shield obviously is percentage health, and just reducing that really quickly is good. But here we have an engaged in the mid lane. Idle it, it tracks his falling low and low, but the right wing is there for the heal. The Valkyrie comes, pulls Milo in, and Milo is going to fall. That is another kill here for the blue team. They're just getting so much momentum right now, DK. Yeah, they are. They get back-to-back -back kills onto Marlo. The hook comes down onto Ravakal, but it's not going to uh, result into a kill. Now, the red team still has both control or both uh, shrines, act, uh, both shrines in their favor. Um, and now, as we see Abrak creeping up onto Arion 70, putting him down to half health already. Tychus just such good at bursting down people. Yeah, here we are. Hat is being stuck in the top lane though. Two versus one. Misha is going to go down and Hat does indeed fall. That's going to be costly here for the red team. Is they're going to have to rotate someone up there to make sure they get that Sogun perhaps get that shrine back in action. Lavacal is posturing around the mid lane while the red team is looking to siege down this bot lane. They're trying to do that, but with Tychus, it's very hard to siege these buildings. They get the hook onto Burrowing, but dodges the, the root. Beautiful play by Rutek there. So we see uh, Putric, Putric Bell being used by Mac the Kid over here, slowing the background. We see the double stun go down from Marlo. Ravakel is able to get out and no one dies. Yeah, this is the thing. You see, now we have the Odin. The siege is there, but you are lacking the kill pressure uh, with no more percentage damage. So now. Red team back, everyone's alive. They're taking over this top shrine as there's a five-man blue team here in the bot lane, really looking to put on the pressure. Yeah, but in the meantime, Hatton, that's the point. Oh, we see the hook. Oh, the root was so close to be able to hit on, on Arion, but he is able to TP right out of there. Close. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, Malfion's roots just take a little bit of time to set in. And 
it was indeed the problem there. It was Arion able to blink away Abelard trying to get them in. Marlow also fighting in the top half of this lane. Can they get the engage? The engage of Lavacol put, puts Stikers and uh, Stitches in a really hard place. But Retting pick up the Dragonite while we're doing this. But two kills are going to go down. No, Stitches are putting in a really wrong place. He is going to go down. And now Mafkuren is in danger. Diva don't even see them out. They get the Dragonite, but they lose the team fight. What can Blue Team do with this semi advantage that they now have? Uh, it seems. Oh, they're looking for Marlo as well. Can they secure the kill? They have the Diva Bomb. Marlo. No, they he's jump able away to just get out. out of that. Oh, Cassia puts the damage. 200 HP. But they're just going to push this fort down while the dragon gets the mid fort. So they trade structures, but they get the four kills advantage. So super well done by, uh, by discussing here. Yeah, and you know, the the trade for a fort for a fort, but it does mean there's a level lead right now for Disgusting. Yeah, there is, and Hat now on that Rector is going to take the Fountain in the top lane, giving himself uh, a bit of an advantage, but there's five people rotating onto this Dragon Knight, and this is not looking good for Hat and Marlo, they're in a world of hurt. The rest the of the red team are on there. their way. Oh, the Valkyrie just pulls them into there. The ball's coming out, just the peel. Misha is being sacrificed like a bear to the slaughter. Yep. The red Poor team get Misha. out, but at what cost? They're now behind in the talents here. Hat is all by himself, no Misha, and the blue team are looking to collapse here on this bruiser camp. Now with level 16, they are going to uh, they're going to invade this, and we see the fishing hook from Stitches coming out at level 13. No, I love this talent. It can uh, give so much unexpected uh, unexpected kills. Uh, just random hooks, put it in a bush. And maybe you'll fish someone out, but we see a four-man rotation onto Rexar in the top lane, and he's going to fall. Yeah, so Rexar just getting caught out there underneath the top fort. Um, with this blue bruiser camp pushing in, it means they are going to be able to take this, and that's going to put Rexar in a little bit of a squishier situation again. Meaning that when these shrines come up, he has not got anywhere to fall back to. Back the kid just posturing around, trying to think, can I get a hook, or can I not? We obviously do have the Putrid Vial not being used too much just yet, as uh, these blow-up compositions mean that Putrid Vial... They're looking for a hook on the rotation, but they miss. No. Sadly, Max Psychic Sense not working this time. Not this time, no. But he has 25 stacks on his level 1 globes. Now, if he gets 5 more globes, he's going to have 10% extra movement speed, which is going to be very big for him. So he also goes into the armor reduction at level 16 on his run. Yeah, it just means that they can get an extra bit of blow up. Here comes the hook. It's on Diva. She doesn't have the mech right now. The stun comes out. She has the mech available now. She's going in. She's going to pop it here right in the back line. Marlo is going to be on the wrong side of the team fight. The boars come out straight away, but Marlo is falling lower and lower. Tenderloin trying to keep him up. The tranquility is popped to give him a little bit of armor. The blue team, they're all out of cooldowns right now, but the red team looking to turn around. Odin is putting out all the damage, but oh, the avalanche yeah, is there. Puts Mafia in the wrong yeah. place. And there's the leaming combo. Really takes him out. Red team now on the retreat. Yeah, what a beautiful play from Ravakel there on that May, getting the the avalanche onto that single Malfurion, and you know if you, if you get avalanched into that team, you're not going to survive as a Malfurion. No, you know Malfurion, he's more of a summer child, and these winter weather's just not quite for him. Magnekin trying to find a little bit of a a, yeah, uh, a lot of damage, and May secure or sorry, Liming secures that kill and. That's going to be two. The resets are coming in. Can they get Abelar? The wave of force is there. The damage. Marlo spears in. He's going to fall. DNA Abelar is going to fall as well. And that's a four. That's a five man team wipe, actually. Now Malfia yeah. is back alive. Malfia and solo defense. It could be a miracle. He could pull it out, but no. It's going to be very tricky. What can Malfia do to defend this? It's such a hard way. I want to just say that. <laughs> DNA has done so well. They used Tiger's Grenade to try and confirm the hooks by knocking people into the hook path, but it's not going to be enough as it looks like Blue Team are really putting the pressure and they're going to try and get a Dragonite. As Tenderloin is the last one to defend, with Broccoli maybe coming out to help as well. Here comes the boars. Lavacal is falling a bit lower and lower. The DPS are being focused, but 30% on the core. Are they going to be able to do this, DK? I don't think they're going to be able to do this, and it's just game one going over to Disgusting. What a what a what games from them? Yeah, I mean it was. Beautifully done.
we have the chat saying that what a hectic fight. I think it was a hectic game. There just seemed yeah. non-stop action everywhere. Top lane, bot lane, mid lane, in between the lanes. Uh, everything was happening here as disgusting hit game number one on Dragonshire. Now, DNA have the choice. Do they want to be able to get out and uh, have their own map pick once again? Or are they going to go for first pick? It's a little bit of a cheekier advantage to give yourself control of the draft. What would you do in this situation, DK? Um, let's see. Um, now, Diablo needs a faction. It did uh, pick Dragonshire for themselves, and it didn't quite work out with the Stitches and the Tychus. They, weren't, they staggered deaths a bit too much. So maybe they'll head into a first pick and get to, get the the meta picks like the Chromie, maybe Cassia, something like that, um, and maybe yeah. take the draft from there. It seems like they got the draft they wanted though here on Dragonshire. You know, having uh, having the the blow up composition that just sort of looked almost perfect. They were getting so many good hooks, so many good kills, but it just looked like they just slipped out of their fingers a little bit and and they lost control. But maybe. With this first pick, they'll be able to do something a little bit different that they want to. Obviously, they are playing with a bit of an emergency sub hat from Fifth of Robius, The runners-up of the Legendary Cup yesterday is playing with them. And we're going to be going to Volskaya Foundry. It's going to be yeah, another indeed interesting it is. Map. It was picked by uh, by Disgusting here. Uh, Diablo needs affection. Opting into the first pick, um, like I predicted. And, I mean, Volskaya is one of those maps where you just brawl over a point uh, for most of the game actually yeah yeah it, it really is and obviously uh, i'm not sure which hero that favors i am expecting tigers being picked up early once again i think he does really well on this point and puts a lot of pressure and enables so many different types of compositions but that leaming also was a massive pain to go into do you think that's going to be a priority uh yeah, it definitely could be. Reeming is very strong on point control with those orbs. Um, can put out so much damage. Uh, and Arion 70 just just hit the combos every time to secure the kills. Malfurion on the rotation um, from mid to bot got caught out. And it, his combo was there. It secured the kill. And then when the Avalanche came out from Ravakel on that May, the combo yeah. was there as well. Do you think the May is the ban then as well? Uh, you know, May on this point can do a lot of wonders with mm. those large blizzards. It looks like actually uh, Hat is not going to be here for the second game. DNA Galaxy is here. So the full roster from Diablo and Faction is going to be playing in this game number two transparent. Yep. The man, the myth, the legend himself. DNA Galaxy here to pick his team back up from the ashes if they lose this game they are out of the mythic championship dk of course we are in our lower bracket i think it's technically a quarter final uh lower bracket quarter final here <laughs> uh and yes so if they get knocked out here they do not have a way of coming back in they have to be able to win this to look to take on the winner of hype against um uh pepper milady so yeah uh, and so far in that match, Hype is up 1-0 against Pepe Milady. So uh, if you want to see that, also such a good match. It's going to be on Heroes underscore Lounge 2 as we head into draft number 2 here on Volskaya Foundry. Yes, yeah. So DN DNA need to win this one. They need to win it to stay in. They have control of the draft. Their first pick, this was map pick for Disgusting. What can they pull out? Yes, if you're just tuning in with us, this is the Mythic Championship for Heroes Lounge Season 13. These teams are the best of the best. Our Division 1 um, win <laughs> playoff winners almost. Well, they're not winners yet. They are trying to become the winners. They've got a grueling few matches ahead of them in order to become the champions of the Mythic Championship. So some of the best players here really want to prove themselves. And they're going with a Chrome Ban and a Tyrael Ban. These are such... Sort of insta picks those those it's such more of a priority on personal preference is it not at this level yeah it definitely is i mean like i said mac the kid on the tyriel is such a menace 
he can set up for his team so well, even though Tyrael doesn't quite have that CC, but we see the Chromie being banned out as well, and the Sylvanas again. Now, are we going to see a Tracer banned out here to uh, complete? Yes, we are to complete. The yep, I've just had it in ban. my earpiece, DK. Yep, there is a D there is a Tracer ban. Yep, can confirm. Yep, yep. can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> can confirm. Tracer ban, yes, all the same. Yeah, here we have the stats of the Tracer. Obviously, a 78% win rate as Tracer. She's a power pick. She does, she's a menace. And here on False Sky Foundry, she is no stranger being picked up. But there we go, that first pick Tigers I was talking about. It's a power pick, and uh, Milo is the one playing at this time, it seems. Yeah, I mean, he picked it up, but they can always switch around, right? That's what I love about the flexibility um, of custom games. You can swap around picks uh, to alter your draft if needed. Um, now we see D.Va being picked up and priming. They say, it worked for us last game, why not do it again? See, Tracer was banned out, but does anyone else get this feeling of deja vu? Because uh... Oh no. <laughs> Certainly I am. Yeah, this is a rewind completely. Chromie also, you know, I can, I can make jokes all day about this draft so far, but I would give no justice because uh, Tyrael is banned out as well. But Stukov and Liark, that's a little bit different. A uh, little bit different indeed. And we have now Ablal being the one in the offlane, cleaning up, or is this the four-man Liark that has been foretold? There has been some uh, main tank Leoric going on uh, in CCL recently um, against a Johanna uh, as a main tank. So maybe we would see that here, possibly? Yeah, quite possibly. I'm not quite sure what the setup is for it, but with an Imperius now being banned out, it sort of means that there's going to be a little bit less blow up. I'm not sure if Zarya has played in that composition. I really can't remember. I've not been keeping up with this side of the meta too much, I must admit. But we see a Medivh now bound out. Now that is another big game changer. And I really like that they've prioritized that as a ban. as something they don't want to have to deal with. So it looks like we'll be probably getting another Li Ming pickup, I would expect, from Disgusting. Yeah, I mean, it has to be right. Uh, Arion did so much work, and yeah, there it is, Cassia and Li Ming, and this is just the same draft all over again. From, if it ain't uh, broke, from disgusting. don't fix it. You know, I really like exactly. it. I, I, the Ming was great, the Cassia was great. What more could you want? Yeah, do you think we're gonna see a May last pick here from Lavakel again? Uh, oh yeah, I, I think so. You think so? Okay. Let's see. We see Diablo being being picked up by Diablo Needs Affection and Falstead as well, creating that extra global pressure. And there's the May. As you said, a feeling yeah. of deja vu. It's just this exact same draft. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. These are two fantastic compositions. Obviously, disgusting. Just going with it again. But the Diablo has been let through, getting that affection. Yeah, if you think the DNA Galaxy can take this back, take the game that they need to to stay in the competition in the Mythic Championship here on Heroes Lounge, then do exclamation mark bet B and the number of points you want to bet. Or if you think that maybe that Disgusting can close this out and take it to an O. Then you can do it's my part, bet A and the number of points you want to bet. So uh, with both of these compositions looking good, which one do you think, DK? Um, I mean, Disgusting showed us that their draft, which is exactly the same, worked the last game. So I'm just going to bet on them uh, to take the 2-0 victory. I believe in the comeback here. We've got Galaxy back. We've got the Diablo here. I'm betting Bay all of my points. Oh, I've got 20! It's all good. I have 10 points. Uh, <laughs> Quite unfortunate. So here we are. Game number two here on Volskaya Foundry. Yes, these two teams are looking hot, but here on the blue side, we have Disgusting looking to close this out too. Well. We have Lavacal on the May, who take on Brightwing, Itrex on Cassia, Arcunis on Diva, and Aryan on Lime. And on the right side, we have Diablo Needs Affection trying to make the reverse sweep happen. We have Mac the Kid on Diablo. We have Galaxy, who finally is out of bed on Falstead, Tenderloin uh, on Stukov, Abelon playing the Lyric, and Marlo is going to play that Tychus. Yeah, this, this Tychus again, it looked really good in game number one, but it wasn't quite enough to close out the game. 
I like what they're doing here. They obviously have now Abla on the off lane, not having to use the substitute that they had. So, will this be enough to get them in the game? Get them in the series here in the Heroes Lounge Season 13 Mythic Championship. Oh, Pauline. You know, with that Diablo, their early game isn't very strong. So they're just going to try and get those souls up, get his HP up, and then they're going to look for fights. Yeah, and perhaps they can do that because we do see them stepping forward and getting that damage going onto Lavacool. But with Arion now getting the flank, trying to disrupt the rotation, these rotations being so slick. Of course, Bosky is one of those maps that everyone likes to think of as almost a script. You've got, you know what you're doing, you go to it. And here we see it straight away. Both teams going to their turret camp as now the off lane battling out uh, to to get that priority on the wave. And Abla is doing a fantastic job keeping Arkunis almost in the danger zone if his team want to get him. Yeah, and both solo laners are trading out a lot of damage. Um, and there's a rotation coming out from Arlo onto Ar Arkunis. Can he get out? The mech dies. The pop misses though. Can they secure the kill on the D.Va? No, they cannot. But they do get the mech, which is... Uh, which counts as half a kill and still gets half of the experience. Yep, some XP is more than no XP. I can I can look at the stats right now and there's 201 XP at this point in the game for a Diva mech, which uh, you know is equivalent to some some like half a half a mercenary camp. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so every now... little bit of experience counts, right? Now they have the early level four. Maybe they want to look for an engage. But yeah, no. and the big thing is getting that early level 7, of course, on this first objective. The support camp is currently up and available. Can the teams posture around it? Yep, we have Leo now with a superior wave clear to D.Va rotating up. It's going to be a quick 4v5 as the blue team are trying to start it. And Mac the Kid is looking to maybe get the engage, but he's being pushed in. Marlo on the Tigers maybe looking to get the damage as well. Mac the Kid slamming D.Va away. Can the red team take control? And it looks like both teams just disengaged from the support camp. Our yeah, and, and you know, that's if you can get an engage around that support camp, um, then then that's good. But it seems like Disgusting is going to take this, just going to force their way through. They see Leoric in the bottom lane, so they just take it. And they're going to have item prioritization for the next um, control point. Yeah, and, and that is exactly what you want here on False Sky Foundry. Also gave them a little bit of XP that they need to catch up. Both teams incredibly equal on that front as they look to try and race towards level 7. We see Marlo now going in, trying to get that poke damage on Lavacol, but now having to dodge out on the leaning off. I must say the, the poke damage on the side of DNA is a little bit lower than the side of Disgusting. Yeah, it is. But now... Um... DNA Mac the Kid did opt into uh, Soul to the Flame at level 4, which means whenever his fire stomps uh, hits three heroes, um, he will get extra souls. So on this pr on this uh, control point, they can just go uh, for the poke, and then they can get the extra souls, which will make him so much scarier uh, later in the game. And yeah, now we see we the Diva bomb being used, a lot of damage onto Diva gets flipped. The Mac the Kid gets hit by the Diva Bomb into the towers and he is going to fall first. Mac the Kid taken out by Mech the Kid. Uh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, this is what you get when you get me as the caster. All these terrible jokes that oh, don't really no. make sense. But disgusting now, looking to move in on this fortification camp. They've taken it away from the red team. Often teams want to take that themselves during this sort of mid phase of the first objective. but. No, disgusting ticket away from the enemy team and they'll be able to pick up their own now as well putting them in a great position here on the first yeah. objective of Oscar Foundry and in the meantime DNA Galaxy is just pushing in the top lane almost as a tower a tower down already um, but Rutek on the brain is there to catch up the experience as we now see both teams contesting the control point yeah and Red Team really trying to get on there. Brightwing having that global means that she can come at any point as well. Fast obviously available, but DNA Magna Kid trying to engage. But here is the ice block. Here is the Brightwing coming in. And three turrets on the side of the blue team means that all they have to do is get the engage they want. And then they're going to pop it. Here's the red turret. There's two blue turrets on the ground. There's three so much damage going out. And the heal DNA camp. Galaxy is falling lower and lower. And those three turrets are 18 HP. Oh, but Ravakel secures that kill with the auto attack. Now Stukov. 
can he get out? No. Uh, yes. <laughs> he can get out and he is going to be safe. But Mac the Kid not having a fun game so far is going to fall for the second time there. This is going to be the first control be uh, beacon and the first protector going over to Disgusting. Yeah, and this is... Um... This is really impressive. Obviously, we've got to level 10 accelerated towards that. That's just the extra soak that these top level teams get. Making sure they get the mercenary camps, get the extra minion soak. And just with two kills, I've really got this level 10 just after the first objective. Yeah, and those three turret camps also giving them so much extra damage there. Um, but also a lot more experience, which propelled them, as you said, to level 10 earlier. Now, we see uh, three people from Disgusting in the bottom lane. As then Tomb goes down onto Lavakel, the trait is there to stop the charge. The silence, Falstead flew, and are they going to be able to get the kill? Yes, they can. In the meantime, the Protector with Cassian Browing in there is just going to run Rampage on these towers in the top lane. Yeah, this is the sort of play we often see at the, t the, the sort of high level side. You sometimes sacrifice some of the macro just to get that kill, to get you back in the game, get you that rotation. And Tiger's trying desperately to take down the Protector but gets shoved away. Can he take it down? No, not just yet. So they've lost their healing well, but they got the kill, and that's going to get them that momentum swing that I was talking about. Really putting them back into the scripts as a support camp that's going to now be up for both teams to contest over. Yeah, and DNA Mac the Kid now at 93 uh, souls he's going to be very tanky now and with that soul shield is going to be able to deny a lot of damage from the dreaming and that cassia so he's going to be a terror the lord of terror in these fights yeah so now we see all these heroics picked up on both teams they're just gonna have to go through picking up these camps now the support camp is the next contested level 12 and level 12 no 13s just yet Mac the kid has sniffed out as you say full souls with soul shield is gonna be so important engaging into this leaming but there's just even Stevens right now, Abla is going to go in, looking for the Entomb, doesn't quite hit, and the Avalanche comes out, putting two heroes away, the cast gets the Valkyrie onto the Slugov, he pops his healing, the massive swipe is there to keep him alive, as the bomb puts him lower and lower, Diva on the chase, can they get the kill? Yes, Stukov is the one to go down, I think that is all they are going to get for now. And Arion secures that kill onto Stukov with the beautiful combo, the Valkyrie pulled him in and put him in such a bad position. Um, and they're now going to run away with level 13, with the extra kill, and they're going to put uh, pressure on these lanes and on these structures. Yeah, we now see that uh, red team really are struggling. They're falling behind the pressure just everywhere. As you say, that the, the lane pressure has gone out. They've almost got all towers in every lane, and it just means that... They're, they're, they're getting ahead in XP, and also there's nowhere to run if the Avalanche is going to be there for the blue team. Yeah, Ravokal already showed in the previous game that his May is very dangerous with those Avalanches onto that Malfurion, which secured the beautiful kill. Um, but now the control beacon is going to be up very, very soon. And we see now a gank onto Arcunus, onto that Diva. The Browing Teleport is there. Can they secure? The kill, no, they cannot. The the gust in the in tomb, but it doesn't quite um, match up. As we see the the Valkyrie onto Diablo it pops his soul shield, and he is able to get out so far. Yeah, Labakal be looking for that uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> avalanche, but you know the the. Diablo not able to get the combo here. The red team just on full retreat as the rest of the blue team trying to get in there. Lavacal gets the avalanche off, but it doesn't hit anybody. And he's going to be in danger now as he's falling lower and lower. Brighton trying to keep him alive. But no, Heroic's traded left, right, and center. But Odin is still available. That's really good hit from the red team. Yeah, a lot of ults are used there. The, the avalanche and the apocalypse being the big ones there. But so now... Um, the control beacon is up in three seconds and it is going to be fought over. Yeah, the, the main combo of Entomb Mighty Gust seems to be what DNA are looking for, but they just missed it as Diva was too quick escaping the Entomb this time. It is going to be impactful later on in the game. As we get to level 20, we may well see 
that mighty gust upgrade. Yep, the wind tunnel. And it's a big playmaker. We've seen it yesterday in the Legendary Cup. And it sure is to do oh, a lot of damage. There's the intuitive cast grenade. It's really nice, but Marlow is looking out for Arcunas in the back line. Mavic is on the way. The Valkyrie does get the Stuke off. He's going to have to put that on that turret, and he's going to be the first one to fall. Really nice done here from Itrax. Now, I'm not sure if they want to uh, use Entomb onto the May every time because they tried it twice now and it's just n not worked out for them. So maybe they should look for for another target to Entomb. Yeah, now, it's Marlo almost these desperation damage damage on Arcunis actually, who's going to rotate into the bottom lane. Yeah, as I was saying, sort of the desperation kills coming out from uh, DNA right now. Getting these in tombs thinking, right, someone's out of position, but the blue team rotating so quickly in these situations just to collapse and make it worth. Cassia picking up those Valkyrie kills on Stukov has been instrumental in getting it, but Abla falling here on the Lyric. It is Lyric, but it's still XP and they're not ahead in that at the moment. He's getting a lot of trade value. Um, but now at level 20, um, it's going to be a whole different game, right? Because it's going to be a silenced end tomb, which means Browing doesn't want to teleport in there because she will be silenced at that point. Yeah, Mighty Gust just used now here on the bot lane as Falstad escaped two members. You were talking about the level 20s, and Bolt Sky Foundry often goes to level 20. So I think it could still be a game that Javelinese Affection could win. Yeah, definitely. Like, as you said, this map always goes to level 20, to that third protector, which is really where you want to have your spike. Um, that's why the later game heroes are so strong on this map, like the Zeratul, for example. Yeah, yeah, and we see it here. So we've got the Lyric level 20, we have Faust level 20, Diablo and Tychus as well. So many impactful heroics that get upgraded to level 20, but right now we're at level 60 and the red team have the control of the point. Can they find something? Arcunis has that Diva bomb available. Lavakal looking to try and get that avalanche, and Ablar has fallen down to 20 HP. The heal comes out from the Stukov, keeping him alive from the Ming to get the stop the reset, but now the kid is now in trouble. The end two actually stopping the pulling back. Here comes the Apocalypse trying to get something. Lyric is still falling lower and lower, but no, no kills yet. But Diablo is the first one to go down and that's going to be Lee Ming looking for more action. And that's going to be very big on the side for the disgusting like Diablo is back alive again but he has no souls he's so squishy and it's going to take a long time for him to get those souls back. Now disgusting do get the support beacon they get the objective they're level 18 to 16 and they're going to push these forts down Try to get the uh, early level 20 and run away with the game. Yeah, so Team Name okay, trying to get his souls back as they do with those fire stomps. Tiger's pretty good at taking out the Protector, but right now being used to defend the mid lane instead. The Protector, will it get a keep or are they just going to go for that four play? It looks like Blue Team are just using it as a threat to try and get that four in the bot lane. And they're actually dancing, dancing. with it. <laughs> now the dance on that, on that uh, Protector is just so fun. I love that dance, but now we see three people responding to that mech. And in the meantime, uh, three people from Disgusting are going to push down the bottom lane, trying to secure that fountain. Uh, yeah, too often do people not value the macro that you can do on Volskaya Foundry. Everyone thinks it's a big teamfight map, but no, there are opportunities to get these little macro fights in. And I really like what Disgusting are doing. Yes, if you're joining us, this is the Mythic Championship. But here comes the big Entomb, but it's also a huge avalanche. That's a, that's a 90 second cooldown traded for 51. Uh, I think DNA will be happy with that. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, but now in that top lane, the keep falls down to half health from that protector. And that's going to be... Uh, it's going to be under catapult pressure uh, once every third wave. And at some point, Diablo needs a faction will have to respond to that. Otherwise, their keep will fall. Yeah, absolutely. And they are looking to try and get this invade before level 20. The objective's not quite up, but uh, they're still looking for it. Just 10 seconds still on Entomb. And that was just... I think about five seconds too long for Ablar wanting to go in there. So, red team now. They're happy to have the top lane pushed out, I think, because they're just going to get that extra stroke. And maybe, maybe that will get them to 20 in time to contest this bottom objective. It's definitely possible. The level 20s are now in for Disgusting. And we see Invisible French, which can be so hard to deal with. Because if you're invisible, if your May is invisible, and Diablo needs affection, steps out a bit too far, then 
an avalanche can cost them the game even. Yeah, incredible. And also the Imprisoning Light. Uh, heroic ability that won the last Mythic Championship. So getting those big silences, the big roots can be incredible stuff here. If Atrax hits the same Valkyries that he's been doing in the past, it's going to be good. Watch out for that. They're trying to put the pressure on the top before level 20. The Odin has been popped to try and defend. And I think that's sensible stuff here from Marlo. Yeah, definitely. They're trying to defend this the Valkyrie, but Marlo barely dodges it with the dash. Very well done by him. This keep is so low. Disgusting want it. They want it down, and there it is. The first keep of the game goes over to Disgusting. Yep, like Ariana Grande has said herself. She won it, she got it, and Disgusting take it away. So now the red team have to look. DNA putting out the fortification camp, trading it for the support camp. As they're getting so close to level 20. That's the level they want. Now Frosta does have 50 stacks on that season marksman. And together with the giant carry he picked up at level 13, that's going to be so much damage onto the D.Va and onto the Mei. Yeah, we've seen the percentage damage strategy coming out here a lot from DNA. They've obviously got the Tychus, and with this Giant Killer and the extra attack speed, it's going to be good. Here comes the big gust, the mighty gust, the wind tunnel is put on two, but it's not the two that they want. The Silence and Tomb is on the May. She's there, but I don't think the rest of the red team can get the damage on here. Here comes the bright wind healing her up, and DNA back the kid is in a little bit of a world of hurt. This flailing swipe comes out to save him, but no, it looks like the red team are on full retreat after trying to pop their combo. Yeah, Ravikel got entombed there. But uh, Arcunis on that D.Va had such a good zoning mech um, that zoned out three people from Diablo Needs Affection to be, um, from getting onto that tank. And now they're going to push this bottom forward and they're going to get that down. Yeah, we see the blue team pushing further and further forward. These flading swipe cooldowns are really nice and it just helps them disengage that little bit extra. Magnica trying to get the stun here and Lavacal is falling lower and lower. Marlo putting out the percentage damage on Lavacal. The swipe used while in Icebox keeps them a little bit back, but here comes the big red butter now pushing down and down. Arcunus is falling lower and lower. Can the red team get something? DNA Galaxy once again looking for the gust. Comes up in one second. Hasn't used it yet. The silence is huge and Arlan is falling lower and lower. Can Galaxy get there before he goes down? No, there's the wind tunnel and Lavacal. It's still alive, but Lee Ming goes down. Red team coming back, swinging right now, DK. Yeah, that Abelar with the monster and tomb onto two people. It gives them the kill they need. They can get the objective, they can get the map pressure back. Foster is already dealing with the catapults that are in the top lane, that are, that are building up. And now they take the enemy fortification camp. Now what can they achieve while Lee Ming is still dead for 35 seconds? I think they can get some good pressure. I think they should be able to get this protector. I say should because blue team could make a miracle play. They are doing really well. And blue team are looking to pressure elsewhere. Maybe trying to catch Falstad off. But they've got 40 seconds into the support camp. And I think it's going to be good. And they're looking for this uh, for this Falstad. Now, do they see it? The pings come out. The danger is there. They know that Disgusting is here. They are invisible friends, but they have been scouted out. Here comes the wind tunnel onto the siege The camp. informant oh! Tigans and Tomb. Oh my god. Browing falls first and Itrax is trying to get DNA Galaxy, but he's going to get out. DNA Abelar, DNA Abelar is chasing. What an entomb. Yeah, and Itrax is there, stuck between a rock and a hard place, but is able to get away with the instant mount. Dismounted now by Marlo. Abla once again trying to get Itrax. Itrax is so low with no support. They are getting out, but here we see and the bot lane. Instead, we have a protector against the Leeming. The battle of the ages, robot versus mage. It's the one we've all liked to see, but the mage <laughs> is accompanied by a fort. And the Diablo is stuck inside there. Not really sure what to do with no extra damage. So Lavacal now, a little bit invisible, trying to get the avalanche maybe onto the Stukov. No, he and there it is. It. Yep. Stukov is and in the tower. The Ming combo hits him so hard, and he just gets one shot now. Then Tomb onto two again. Diabra DNA Abelar is so strong with these. Yeah, and both teams showing that they don't need off. those support players. <laughs> wow, Falstead leaves the camps in the top lane and the catapult he's flying towards his team they're going to look to push this keep down the stun onto diva dma dna mac the kid secures the kill diva falls so does cassia 
Yeah, Leoric has been put onto camp clearing duty, as all good Leorics should do. And here is the big red button, just putting so much siege damage out. That's going to be over fairly shortly, but yep, there it is popping out. So can they get this return keep that they really need? But they are so much more in the game than they were for the whole of the 19 other levels that we saw before level 20. Yeah, and this keep is going too far as well. Mac the Kid goes on to the Ming. But, oh, he... The keep getting taken HP. <laughs> I think he was Mar still in keep range. Margo MVP there, <laughs> taking down the keep. Oh, Focus very close space. there. Because he does have his souls completed. If he falls there, that's going to be so bad for them. Yeah. He's able to get out and fall set. Now has 67 stacks on his seasoned marksman. Stacking up that damage, very big, very big. Now yeah, they're taking the support camp. Up to 68 stacks now, getting closer and closer to just being a phenomenal ranged assassin. And fast, that's one of those ones that has that mage potential, that wave clear, the global pressure, and that auto attack that can be so vital, especially when trying to take down these maze when they're stuck inside the silencing and tomb of Leoric. But right now, red team just taking full control of the map almost like blue team had in the early part of this game, but not closed out just yet. I mean, as we said, this map always goes to level 20 and the level 20s from Diablo Needs Affection are so strong. They have the wind tunnel, they have the Hellgate from Diablo, big red button, and of course, buried alive, so big. Yeah. It is super big, and they're getting the camp pressure. They are withdrawing away from the blue team right now, waiting to make sure that they have the macro pressure, they have control. Of course, they are two forts down, so it does mean that they have to take care of these mid and top lanes. It's just consistent pressure that they have nothing against. So, Falstad keeping this top lane while Leoric perhaps looking for those in tombs, or to just follow up on those Mighty Gust Wind Tunnel combos. The next objective, popping up in 30 seconds. What can Blue Team do to get back in the driver's seat, DK? I think they need a big engage from Ravakel on that May with an avalanche and maybe secure a kill that way. Now that you have the invisible friends, Ravakel is abusing that, standing invisibly right there. And he gets spotted out by DNA Mac the Kid actually with that fire stomp. I'm not sure if that was deliberate or accidental, but it was incredibly a good attempt here from Lavacal. One big avalanche could be the game-winning heroic play here for the blue team. Now, they see that Falstad's in the bottom. He has been clearing out these walls to deny the vision, but Lavacal is looking to try and get the, de the deny. Uh, Dinan Galaxy will have the ability to fly away if he can do quickly. Yep, here it is, here it is. He goes for the fly, and it looks like he is out and away. Lavacal, once again, looking for this gank of opportunity. Yeah, DNA Mactica tries to spot him, up, spot him out again, but he doesn't quite find him now. Ablar is sitting onto this point, and they're going to start channeling the first percentages on the control points. Yeah, red team. They want this badly. They need another protector to try and get rid of it. But Falsad has to go to the top lane. He doesn't have that fly. Of course, Wind Tunnel was picked up at level 20, not the epic mount of all. So. A little bit longer for Galaxy to have that flight. Set and I that. like what that and Galaxy is doing here. He doesn't take the minion wave. He just takes the catapults down, which are the real threat to the core. 76 stacks on Season's Marksman. Do you know how many stacks that is? That, 76. That, that's almost double what you need for Season Marksman to be unlocked. Yep. But here we go. Mac the Kid goes for the charge, trying to just get himself in Abrar the is stack. looking for that Entomb. Can they find it? Margo put in pressure onto the front line here with the bigger they are. He has the Entomb, goes down onto uh, the May. Diablo charges in, but they cannot secure the kill. Ravakel goes back in, has that 50 spell armor, of course, from his level 4. Bigger button is popped, and the control goes over to Diablo Needs Affection. Yeah, they're going to have to use the full cooldown now of this big red button to try and maintain the point. There was such a good attempt here from Itrax to maybe try and get some silence and roots, but here comes the Apocalypse combo. No, the... The Polymorph goes out before Mag the Kid is able to do anything and has to use the Hellgate to get away. The Disengage coming out here, the Swipes may be trying to do something, but the Silence on the May. May is looking in all sorts of trouble, and the Apocalypse is going to be a bad, but the Emergency Eye Block is going to keep her alive for one more second, but she is going to go down. The Red Team is just turning this around, TK. But now the <laughs> Ming gets the resets, gets one, gets two, and they're looking for more. Lyric falls, Diablo respawns, so it is still a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Uh, four against four. Uh, onto this control beacon that can happen. 
but no souls now. Such a squishier hero, especially against Li Ming with a less powerful soul shield. And it tracks on this Cassia. It's just putting back out shed loads of damage up to 82k in this match right now not matching marlo's 120k on the tigers but of course there's percentage damage now fourth protector most people say that this one can march down and hit the core but against the tigers and a 70 and no 81 stacked falstad it's gonna be tricky now having to actually back away for the time being yeah they they realize that the york is going to back be back way sooner than the may and they're going to be so safe about this. Now what are they going to do? Yeah. They're putting the Protector in the top lane. They want to go for core. They're just going to go for it the safe way. But they're so scared of Marlo on that Tychus de dealing so much damage. Yeah, like Tychus is a real MVP of this match so far, trying to do desperate stuff in desperate times, but gets shoved away. That's exactly what they need. Both DPS in this. And uh, with the flailing swipe, just trying to make sure the Diva doesn't get too hasty as well. Marlow falling low and lower. That's really bad for the red team. And they does indeed fall. This Protector late game does so much damage. And Tenderloin is falling lower and lower. Well, DNA Magna Kid is in a world of hurt. What, what can red team do to escape this? They uh, DNA Galaxy uses the Gust to try and save Magna Kid. But that Protector does so much damage onto them. It's still 35% uh, health. Can they go for core here with Tychus being dead? The Avalanche onto Diablo. Can they secure the kill? Yes, they can. Are they going to look for core now? They absolutely will, and they are turning towards it. They have both DPS still in there. 37 seconds on there, but not 20% health. It's going to be falling lower and lower, but I think they'll get rid of the shields, and they will look to get another kill. You know, Sukov is trying their best to keep people up. The silence is there to stop the DPS for a little bit. 60%. It looks like Disgusting are trying to close out this game to 2-0 to go forward in the Mythic Championship. And yes, they will do it. GG, well played. Disgusting. Go through to the next game, the Mythic Championship. What a game from them. DNA were so strong after that level 20. Um, but they just weren't able to to get that final final fight going for them. Yep, yep, indeed. Yeah, what a beautiful play here from them, taking game number two. Now they'll be going up against the winner of our series on Who's Lounge Two. It has gone one one. Hype to Pepper Milady. They're currently in draft right now. Disgusting. They took that series, that second game after being really ahead, then being behind, and now once again being ahead again. That's got to feel pretty good. Do you think they're going to be going far in this mythic championship here today, Deadly Kitten? I mean, so far they've been doing so well in the first two games. In game number one, into an un unusual comp with the Stitches uh, trying to get those pickoffs. They just played the map so well. They got their picks and they just ran away with that game. Now in game number two, they had the early game. After level 20, DNA had the power spike. They were winning the fights. But Li Ming just gets one reset on the Lyuric and that secures the Protector for them and the Protector just secures the game for them. Yeah, and, and that is exactly what they did. That was really crucial. They looked like they were in control with those level 20 talents. They looked like after they got that May kill, but no, the Li Ming popping off, just like you said, just meant that they could get that end game objective and uh, it's done them really well. So now they are going to be waiting to play the winner of Hype versus... Uh, Pepe, Pepe Milady. Milady. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's now, true. Which team would you th prefer to go against if you were disgusting? Hmm. I mean, preference is the team that looks weaker to me. Um, and Pepe Milady finished second with nine wins in that uh, in that uh, mythic championship in the regular season. They had nine wins, only falling to um hasu wins it every day which is such a strong team yeah yeah it really is you know they, they these <sighs> hasu wins these every day you're going to be playing later against skog support a little bit later um but right now disgusting yeah i think they did really well they obviously played against skog support in the main thing and uh, in the main series and uh well not in the main series in the playoff group stages as well as beating pepper Mill lady um so i think disgusting i'm more than happy to face anyone who comes out of this other side of the bracket but thank you for joining us right now we're going to pass you over a little bit to lounge to heroes lounge channel number two while we take a little bit of a break but we will be back 
very shortly, as soon as we can, while the other game does <laughs> goes on. So don't go anywhere, and we will see you later for more of the Heroes Lounge Season 13 Mythic Championship Playoff Final. Thank you for tuning in.